What up, world? Uh, today we're on the first take show featuring Max Kellerman, Stephen A. Smith, covering around the Houston Rockets and the two started uh, studded stars, the dynamic duos are right now, James Harden and Mus uh, Mr. Russell Westbrook. Uh, currently, Daryl Morey gave some comments. We're going to go more into here. And basically, is who's going to be more important to the Rockets the last eight games of the regular season, and then as well as going into the playoffs uh, in that bubble format in Orlando uh, starting in the playoffs. Now, my position with the Rockets was James Harden's peak was in 2018. We can now see more of a digression whenever it comes to his game, and uh, we're not going to really see you know many consistent 40-point games as well as in the high 30s. James Harden is still hovering around that 30-point area. Mark, because Mike D'Antoni does have a team predicated and designed for him by training away Clint Capella, moving P.J. Tucker to the five, brought in Robert Covington within that trade, put him from a small forward, transitioned to a power forward, uh, playing very small ball, kicking it out, three-point shooters, and James Harden can dance, isolation, etc., etc. Now, when it comes to James Harden and Russell Westbrook, uh, they both went to the NBA Finals 2012 together. They played on the same team for at least three Seasons on the Oklahoma City Thunder. James Harden got traded. He's on the Rockets for the last seven seasons. And he's taken the league by storm the past couple of seasons. Uh, 2015, we really saw an emergence of him in his game to where he was top two in MVP considerations against Steph Curry. And then following along, he, out of the last four to five seasons, he was always pretty much top two in MVP uh, considerations in the race. Some people debate. Debated, he should have around four to three MVPs right now. I'm fine with him having one. You can make a case for 2015 against Steph Curry, as well as 2017 against Russell Westbrook whenever he averaged a triple-double. Uh, but we've seen them both lead their team by themselves. So James Harden, he's been to two conference finals appearances, lost to Game 7 in 2018 in the conference finals. I thought that was that season to where that was their best chance of winning a championship. Uh, we've seen 2019, the next falling season, they lost to a Kevin durant list last two games of the Western Conference semis against the Warriors. And now we're in a position to where the Rockets brought in Russell Westbrook. They're going small ball, and I just don't see a, a good future when it comes to this team. They're really going to have to retool. Who knows if they're going to bring back Mike D'Antoni, uh, anyone else within this team, uh, the role players as well. Uh, with Russell Westbrook, he's been bounced in the first round three consecutive seasons as the number one option. So in 2016, whenever Kevin Durant left, and the 2017 uh, playoffs, they lost in the first round to the Utah Jazz, <laughs> led by Donovan Mitchell, a rookie who took out Melo, PG, and Russ, which was crazy. They were even up 3-1 in the series. Uh, then the following season, the Oklahoma City Thunder, uh, who did they lose to? No, no okay, my bad. I was talking about 2018. That was in 2018. But 2017, it was Russ by himself with Victor Oladipo, Stephen Adams. They lost in five games to the Rockets by James Harden. 2018 was against the Jazz, Donovan Mitchell. And then last season, 2019, uh, when Dame Lillard hit that game winner in front of PG's face to take him out in uh, five games. So the Thunder haven't gone anywhere with Russ as the number one option. We pretty much have seen throughout Russ's career here, he can be a number one option for your team to make a deep uh, playoff run as well as let alone be a contender for a championship. So that's when he became a number two option, joining James Harden and the Rockets. Now, it was a pretty much a circus show uh, within this year. You know, there was highlights of Russ when he started to take over in the second half. Uh, they've been trying to find their niche together. But when we're looking in the playoffs, Harden has to be the main player to step up as well as he's the most important to the Rockets because if Harden is not doing his thing and Russ is, they're going to be out in the first round. Now, if it's vice versa, Harden can still get you to a second or third round series going against either the Clippers or Lakers in either the second or third round. But there is a detriment. You know, the Rockets right now, they're going to probably most likely finish the fifth or sixth seed uh, to the playoffs. They finish the sixth seed. They're going to go against probably Denver Nuggets. If you go a four seed, you're probably going to go against the Thunder Jazz. Uh, I would prefer if they go against the Thunder Jazz. I would have the Rockets move to the second round. But if you're a six seed, probably going against the Nuggets. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. But, you know, let's uh, let's jump into here and see what they have to say with Darren Mori and the crew. Ever on our team, we should win this thing. 
Max, let's focus on Russ and James. Who's more important to the Rockets winning a title? Is it Harden or is it Westbrook? It's James Harden. James Harden is the best player on the team. James Harden's usage rate is the highest. And James Harden, though Westbrook has also at times struggled uh, in, the, in the highest leverage games in the playoffs, not quite as publicly and as bad as James Harden. Harden is the guy who has to get the monkey off his back. He needs to, because if he does, he enters discussions of the greats at his position in a different way. Um, of course, the same applies to Westbrook, but this is James Harden's team. Uh, so, so who stands to benefit the most, Harden or Westbrook? It's Harden. Who needs to play at their best when it matters most in order to give the team the best chance for success? It's James Harden. Listen, I give credit to James Harden. I'm a fan of him and his game. He's been an explosive, one of the best scorers in NBA history. He can. He was pretty much, uh, his goal for the season was to average 40. Uh, that hasn't been the case, but he did start off the first three weeks to a crazy amount of uh, high 30-point games, which we've seen and been accustomed to him. But James Harden, not only is he a great scorer, he's an impact player. He can be a number one option for your team. You can build a foundation surrounding him, and he can win. Uh, he can generate wins for your franchise. So he's in that same class as LeBron James. LeBron, just let alone with building around him, he can get your team deep in the playoffs, the finals, as well as generate wins. Same thing with Russell Westbrook as the number one option, not to an extent. Uh, Russ can. He's an impact player. He can lead your team to wins, but it's not at a level as LeBron or James Harden. But there's some players out there like. Uh, uh, like an Anthony Davis, you know, he's a, some may debate he's right there with Harden, but Anthony Davis is just a sugar on top. He's a great scorer and player, but he can't get you deep in the playoffs, let alone misses the playoffs a couple of times. Uh, but Harden's in that high class to being a borderline superstar. You know, if you say he's a superstar, I'm cool with that. If you say he's a star, most definitely. But the only reason why I don't have him 100% as a superstar in this game because he hasn't won a championship let alone gone to the finals but you know if you say he's a superstar i can let that go because he did go against the warriors for the last five seasons uh in the playoffs but there's around five or six superstars in the nba i'll cover that for another day but yeah most definitely james harden they have to build around if they build around russell westbrook you're a first or second round uh loss exit there's no championship aspirations but with james harden anything's possible Max Kellerman, I actually disagree with you, but for the reasons that you gave. Everything that you're talking about with James Harden, I don't believe it can happen unless Russell Westbrook shows up and balls. Russell Westbrook has not been out of the first round since Kevin Durant left Oklahoma City. Let's get that out of the way first. That's what Victor Oladipo is his teammate. That's what Paul George is his teammate. Still went home in the first round. That's number one. Number two. Russell Westbrook has been struggling, shooting less than 30% from three-point range over the last several years, and he's at 25% from three-point range this year. I've had this conversation with Daryl Morey. I believe that Russell Westbrook needs to be more effective from the outside, even though he can get to the hole at will. He can finish with the best of them. He's the most athletic point guard in the history of the National Basketball Association. He is a superstar. That's the one Achilles heel for him because defenses are going to get back come playoff time. The pace is going to slow up, even though he's quickened the pace since he's been with Houston. It's going to slow up, and as a result, they're going to force him to shoot more perimeter shots. Max, did you know this stat? Let me throw this out at you. Did you know that James Harden averages 22.7 shots per game this season? Do you know how many shots Russell Westbrook averages? 22.6. They're shooting the same number of shots. So, in other words, what I'm saying, yeah. I mean, hard and long. Yeah, that can't happen. I'll give credit to Russ at the end of the second season or second half of the season. He did stop shooting three pointers and he started to drive the ball into the basket, which that's, uh, you know, that's the best part of his game, just driving in. You know, Russ, he's not he's not the greatest shooter. He's not even a, a good shooter. But I'm fine with him shooting mid-range jumpers. He likes to uh, go off in the fast break, go 100 miles per hour, but then quickly stop, pull up around the free throw line for that midi. I'm cool with that at times. But he started to have a new system as well as checking out his role within the team, and which is prospering. You know, instead of him usually clanking up three-pointers, breaking them, uh, he'll go drive, kick it out to P.J. Tucker, 
Daniel House, Ben McLemore, one of those three D shooters on the wing, on the corner. And we've seen the Rockets, they've hit a hot streak, uh, but then Corona hit. So that's a detriment. But with Russ in the playoffs, I, I just, I can't, I can't trust him. He's inconsistent as it is in the regular season, let alone the playoffs. But this is actually a good thing. He's now become going to become a second option, like he was with uh, Kevin Durant and the Thunder. Uh, so that's going to be kind of a monkey off his back. Uh, but James Harden, he's used to this being a number one option. The Warriors are done with. You know, let's see what happens if they play against the the Lakers or as well as the Clippers in the second round. I mean, let alone if they make it. Uh, but James Harden in the playoffs, people always have their takes on him saying he's a choker listen he the last five seasons uh he's only lost to the spurs once and the warriors four times so losing to a dynasty and then losing to the spurs that's not a bad thing but harden needs to take it a little more to an extra level because in the regular season with james harden he'll drive in the rest will give him calls he'll get at least 20 free throws a game in the playoffs (laughs) it doesn't work that way and we can kind of see how james harden doesn't have those 30 to 40 point games, let alone in the playoffs, it's more focused defensive sets with your scouting uh, and coaching as well as that. But with James Harden in the playoffs, he usually likes to clank up more for three pointers. And uh, that's here or there, but let's see how he finishes 12, off. Three point is a game to Russell's three, but the point is they're shooting the same number of shots, and Russell Westbrook's averaging 27. I think Russell Westbrook is pivotal, he dictates pace. He's going to create opportunities for James Harden. And if he, if Russell Westbrook starts hitting three, oh my God. Yeah. But, <laughs> I mean, even look at the shot right here. If you look at the screen, Russell Westbrook shooting a contested shot. Listen, Russ is not going to consistently hit threes. He may have one game to where he'll hit three or four threes, maybe like four out of nine attempts, you know, around that 40% mark. But no, not consistently. People say it's about Giannis. Like, what if he can shoot, you know, uh, LeBron with free throws? This we Listen, the writing's on the wall. We've already seen this. It's not going to happen. The Rockets are going to be respectable and dynamic in the playoffs. Very fun team to watch. I think they're going to have a hard time in the first round against, like, a Denver Nuggets, per se, because you do have P.J. Tucker running the five, and they are short and low when it comes to the five positions, which... Uh, they're experimenting. They're going all out. I mean, I'm. I don't really have a. I'm not really mad about it. I think they re- really need to consider retooling uh, the foundation of this team this off season. Uh, but no, Russell Westbrook. He's not going to consistently hit jumpers, let alone in a series, let alone in a couple uh, games. Hey, they might win it he all. Doesn't even. They might win it all. But that's my brother, point. I don't think it's. I Russ still think it's going to be the Lakers. The... But they might win it all if he start hitting some threes. Yeah. Yeah, they're alive, and but he doesn't need to hit the threes for them to win it all. But Harden's got to hit his high leverage shots, period. What? Uh, by the way, it's a brilliant move okay. once again by Daryl okay. Morey okay. and the Rockets. They essentially have Russell Westbrook, in a way, playing the five. He's kind of their center. He's where they get their stuff in the paint. And, 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 and he, of course, he has well, to play well for, they, for them to win. But he doesn't have to hit the threes. They but went small. James... Harden they went small to force other people to come small. They went, they, yeah. I mean, overall, I mean, it's not, it's not hard to dive too much into this. Uh, Dare Morey and the team, you know, decided to go small. They're going to run with the starting lineup of Harden, Westbrook. Uh, who's their three? I can't even think. I think Eric Gordon right now, Robert Cummington, and then as well as PJ Tucker. I may be wrong about their small forward right now. I have to, maybe it's Daniel House or. Who knows? They usually like to flip it around in the playoffs. But that team, let alone, doesn't have enough size. They're not the same team as in 2018. They're really digressing away from their winning brand, which is at the wrong time because the Warriors are done with. Uh, it would have been nice to see you know, Chris Paul and James Harden and the crew go against this year. Uh, that would have been very tough against like the Clippers to go against them. Not really sure about the Lakers. Uh, but yeah, let alone, I don't have the Rockets as a contender. They're more pretenders when it comes to the playoffs. You know their peak would probably their peak would be a conference finals. That's unrealistic, but I, I think most likely they're going to lose in the first round if they go against uh, a team with height like a, a Denver Nuggets. I mean, you know they could win that series in seven because you do have two superstars or two stars with James Harden and uh, Russ. But I just don't have trust in that team in the playoffs. Let alone they have five months of rest. Nah. <laughs>